Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video and in this video we're going to be taking a first look at Gold Mythic Wangfa who is going to be coming to RTS in a very different way than what we've seen characters come into the game in the past and I kind of like this. He's going to be an exclusive character in the Mythic store, something to finally spend those medals on if you are someone who haven't been spending them like myself. This is going to be a character you can pick up. More details to follow on how that's going to work, the structure, how much it's going to cost in the future, but that is actually really interesting. We'll get into what he's going to have in his kit in a second, but visually he looks quite a little bit different than the OG S-Class Wangfa. He has got his armor and stuff, but he's lost his optics and gained a baby and a nice little cute teddy bear. I do kind of like it. You can see he is a fast character this time around as well. He's got a blade on his right. On the left, he's got quite a blade. He's like, you call that a knife? Uh, but he doesn't have an attached, so you might find this, this big blade come along somewhere else. If you see him at limit break 3, level 720, he has got 12,977 attack, 18,467 defense, and 18,467 HP. So quite a defensive character, fast. Considered a control character, mythic of course, and he is going to be another character to join the Typhoon Allegiance, that missing link that a lot of people assumed would be coming out. And as you can see in the bottom right hand corner, he has got a leader skill which we'll be checking out later in the, in the video. But first we'll check out his Adrenaline Rush and it is called Paternal Instincts. It is a 66 AP cost rush, so a little bit slow for a defense team character if he is going to be a defense team character. Very tanky from his base stats, we'll have to see. This character gets 200% defense for two turns and Guardian Shield. Days up to three targets for three turns. This isn't actually too bad. Very good self-sustain here. In terms of just like keeping himself alive he doesn't heal himself but because he's a fast character he could have a fast healing weapon and as you probably know fast characters with fast healing weapons are very susceptible to taking huge amounts of damage because they don't have any of those damage reduction for slots and that's going to be quite beneficial in the combo the 200 percent defense is going to have the reduction on the damage he takes three characters getting days for three turns is pretty brutal but obviously this rush isn't going to happen too quickly, so those early signature moves are not going to be too much of a problem. But if Wang Fu does get his rush off, yeah, signature moves are going to be very hard to uh, continue getting off for your own team. And some of them are very important in terms of damage, normalize, this sort of thing. Okay, so we have got the adrenaline rush up here of Wang Fu. If we do the rush, we can target one person. I don't think you primarily use this guy on an attack team, but you never know. He could have some usages. We'll have to check out the rest of his kit. We'll do a rush. And you can see, you can see three characters get days. It's going to be Harper, Garrett, and Dr. Stevens. This is how it will work on a defense team, of course. It will be completely random. You know, two of the characters. One of them seems to be uh, someone who will be focused. So whoever is generally tough a lot of the time or the biggest damage dealer. You can see he gets that Guardian Shield. And you can see he gets the 200% um, defense. Now the Guardian Shield is going to act basically like a guaranteed absolute defense. But obviously that can get removed by Splash and stuff like that. So there are small ways around it. But Guardian Shields are generally pretty nice. Now we'll look at the upgrades on the Adrenaline Rush. And you can see at Grade 2... It gets a 50% defense boost, so it goes from 100% up to 150% defense for two turns. At grade four, it gets plus one day's target, so it goes from one target to two targets. At limit break one, it gets another day's target, so it goes from two targets up to three targets. That's quite the boost. And at LB3, limit break three, it gets another 50% defense boost, so it goes from 150% up to 200%. I would say LB1 is, is very important here. Um, Days is really it, very important to get, but obviously because he's a, most likely going to be a defense team character as a tank, it is good to have him as high grade as possible just because you need those stats to be as high as possible. Defense team characters below LB2 are going to be in for kind of hard time of it when it comes to the stats a lot of the time and the multipliers 
uh, so you do want him to be as high as possible but you do get the benefits obviously with that defense boost once it happens now the rush is not spectacular but i think it is going to be frustrating once he pops this it's going to be harder to take him down with percentage damage 200 percent defense is a lot and uh, the Guardian Shield obviously can be annoying. I personally hate Guardian Shield, especially right now, because there's not too many characters that have things like Splash and stuff like that, but I'm using personally. So it is generally going to be blocking guaranteed damage, which it, which sucks, honestly, if you're going to be coming up against him. And the Days is maybe a bit slow to be on the rush. You probably want to see Days on signature moves and stuff like that. However, it does last a long time, and this could block lots of different things. Revives, like I say... Um, normalize damage you know and it will effectively block ap gain as well because the majority of attack team characters get more ap from doing a signature move than they do from getting a basic attack so that's just a small little addition there now speaking of that signature move it is called protector's duty it has got an initial cooldown of turn one cooldown of three turns number of uses unlimited impair a single enemy for two turns this character gets 50 percent bonus hp this is actually really really nice the impair is great we don't see too many impairs on defense teams and because it's off of the defense teams turn one it's going to stop turn two and beyond rushes on people and generally it's going to be that damage to this so someone who definitely do not want to get impaired um, obviously you can rush particular characters turn one you can get you know going really quickly but it's not you know too commonplace so uh you know, someone like Wangfire is going to be able to stop some dirty rushes basically and the 50 percent bonus hp is awesome because he's getting now bonus hp from his signature move he's also getting defense from his rush and if he does have that healing weapon you know the fast healing weapon he's getting healing from his weapon so you know he's got it all when it comes to heals which is kind of surprising because he's considered a controller but he has got control as you can see he's got the the impair and we saw he's already got the daze but let's see how this works pretty obvious though it's gonna be pretty nice when it does pop so here we are off of turn one and i'm just going to use his signature move and it's as simple as that i didn't actually select an enemy i should have but if you don't select an enemy if you use him on attack it would just be random but um you can see someone is impaired for two turns and he has gained 50 percent of his bonus hp in this case it would only be 9200 but you can get defense team characters up to 50k plus without too much of a problem and he is very defense stat bonus his hp and defense are much higher than his attack so he should be able to get up to like 60k mark and that means that bonus hp off of turn one could be 30k plus which is going to be absolutely brutal to get through with percentage damage and like i say because he's got the fast healing weapon potential the only other ways to get through it would be things like burn bleed but also infection and uh well he's not going to have any problems with infection either if he has got a fast healing weapon so all around he's he's, he's covering quite a lot of bases here which is makes him quite powerful in just terms of like pure stats. Now looking at the upgrades of his signature move, Wangfar at grade three will get plus one to the impaired duration. So it'll go from one turn to two turns. That's pretty easy to come by. At grade five, it'll get minus one to starting cooldown. Again, this is kind of at least the minimums where you want to use him. And it'll go to turn one. And at limit break two, it'll get a 25% bonus HP boost. So it'll go from 25% bonus HP up to 50 percent bonus hp this is quite important that bonus hp off of turn one is going to be brutal it could make the difference between you know 15 ,000 to 20 000 bonus hp depending on how well good your wang far is now this signature move i actually like quite a lot it is going to be completely random who it impairs but generally it should focus what the team focus is i think that's how a lot of the controls happen and you are going to stop a character from a gaining ap but b being able to rush and it is very early on in an attack team to get impaired and there is not a lot of impair resistance going around a lot of people are using taunt resist because there's taunt everywhere on, on all the major defense teams on all the major characters used on these defense teams so um otherwise it would be probably stun resist to try and uh, deal with lao pose but you know this one's going to kind of sneak through this is going to sneak through and considering he's a typhoon character there are a bunch of different um, controls there. You've got now um, Daze on his rush. You've got Impair on his signature move. But you've also got the stun on Deyu's weapon. You've got the stun on Lao Po's rush. You've got heal reduction on Mr. Lu's weapon. And you've also got Maim on um, Zhe Feng's kit. So there's a lot of different effects that you've got to be you know, dealing with there. Which, so uh, yeah, you could get into a lot of trouble if you're not careful. So yeah, nice. I like this signature move. Dazing Wang Far could be quite important. 
Days resist could be quite important too if, if you do want your Wang Fur to actually get this off. Okay, so next up, we're going to be looking at Wang Fur's mythic abilities. These are his passive skills. And we can see that he has, of course, got precision because he is a control character. That means that resistance is going to be 40% lower against this character. So if someone has 100% chance to resist, then it will be reduced down to 60% chance to resist. But it will only be on the, the effects that Wang Fa does. Daze and impair so far. However, the next passive is called Reprimand. When a teammate dies, 40% chance to stun a single enemy for two turns. This is kind of nice. It kind of adds into the control factor that um, Typhoon brings to the table. And also the fact that, you know, a lot of the Typhoon characters have some bonus when someone dies or when they die, like they do something extra. And this is, you know, a little, a little cherry on top for the Typhoon teams. If you have a full Typhoon lineup, you've got to really work out what's the best sort of like sequence to take these characters out. Next up, we have typhoon's bounty at the start of each wave all typhoon allegiance members get 40 percent of their max ap this is really powerful it will happen after leader skills because it's at the start of each wave but it will happen before you know the enemy attack so for instance they'll all have 40 percent ap instantly but you could potentially ap drain that you could potentially um, impair them if you really wanted to it will stack all, also with other things like weapons that do ap gain and it will also stack with any um, passives of defense team characters so for instance if you had william on a team william would give the extra ap only to typhoon characters and it would stack with this and uh, he would just have his normal amount of ap gain it's interesting it's also going to work on attack if you did want to try and use wang far on attack he doesn't necessarily have to be the leader either for this to work but i guess you'd primarily use him there next up is going to be defensive intuition at the start of each wave this character gets 100 percent defense for the first two turns of combat you probably noticed that from like i said eclipse before he just had 100 percent defense this does mean he's got 100 percent defense for the first two turns he'll generally rush on his third turn and that will give him a 200 percent defense buff for the next two turns so he's going to be really tanky. He's going to be really, really tanky indeed. Um, he doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, a really high grade to get this either. He'll probably have this split in two. We'll check that out a little bit with the upgrades. But, you know, really tanky character. Quite similar to how Lao Po works in terms of the beginning of the, the fight. Very, very defensive. Okay, so we're going to attack this team. And you can see a couple of my characters did get taunted. And this is going to play into some of it. But you can see there's a few characters with some AP already. This is because 40% AP went to all the Typhoon characters. Because we have got Wang Fu on this team. But because someone like Lao Po has the taunted attacks in there. That's a guaranteed extra 10 AP. And you can see how close she is to her rush. If I just defend on characters. We have got William in this team. William potentially could give her... A turn one rush natural let's have a little look the AP gain did come in I guess there can potentially be some RNG in there but um, yeah you can see they've already got their rushes if you have a command in this team someone would have got commanded I know there's a lot of teams out there where you can get turn two rushes it's not gonna be too much of a problem but this is turn one command rush really easily without the second hit of William and um, you can see that signature move came in from Wang Fu, and he's, he's got a lot of bonus HP because of that. It stacks with Mr. Lu's bonus HP, of course. Yeah, um, I can see some some pretty good potential uh, with, this, uh, with this character working with particular characters as well. And by particular characters, I, of course, am talking about Typhoon characters. Now, the fact that all those passes work attack and defense... Is very interesting indeed very interesting if we see at grade one you can see he gets the first half of reprimand 20 percent chance to stun a single enemy for two turns and then at grade two he gets the first half of precision that is the lower resists at grade three he gets the second half of reprimand so he's going to get that nice and quick obviously if you don't take out wang far first you could potentially be stunning characters on your team as you take down his teammates interesting enough is only 40 percent chance but still at grade 4, he gets the first half of Typhoon's Bounty. And this is the Allegiance boost to give AP. That's nice and early. At grade 5, he gets the first half of Defensive Intuition. 
and that's the b defense boost that he gets personally and it's a 50 percent boost and then you can see at lb1 he gets the second half of precision stacking up to 40 percent that resists effectively being reduced by this character um, and then at limit break two he gets the second half of typhoon's bounty again the max ap so by lb2 you're going to have huge amounts of power because that's where his signature move gets maxed i believe and this is going to be really powerful on attack or defense but lastly he does get the defense boost up to 100 percent at lb3 that's just going to keep wang far alive it is nice but that typhoon's bounty is the one that a lot of people are probably going to have their eyes on i've got no doubts now it's kind of like a mix between his passives. You could potentially be disappointed with the fact that the stun is not is low percentage and it, it only happens when his teammates die. If, imagine if it happened when anybody died, teammates or enemies, and it was 40% chance. I think that would have been sick. But it is what it is. I think overall his passives are nice and there are definitely some particular makeups that you can get going with this character. There are very few characters from Typhoon that can be used on attack. I don't think they use really there. Mr. Lou's kind of hit and miss because he, he loses parts of his kit and he's quite slow, but I think um, Zhe Feng and uh, Lao Po have potential, so maybe some people can think of ideas on the tag teams for those guys. Now this is the bit that I think a lot of people have been waiting for, it is his leader skill. And it is going to be all teammates get 30% HP and get 100% bleed and bird resistance for the first two turns of combat. This is a defense leader that potentially, you know, is going to be very interesting to use on attack as well as, as an attack leader because the HP boost will boost main damage of certain characters. That's what I noticed straight away. But also the burn and bleed is, is very important, honestly. is very important indeed. Um, it is kind of the missing thing within Typhoon teams as well. Except you could use the uh, weapon from Xia Feng, but I think that her weapon is trait specific. I think, is it alert and strong? Well, this is going to make um, her weapon not as big a deal. And then you could build her a, a separate weapon and then use her weapon like on attack or something like that if you have a particular team or even on a defense team if you have a particular team. You could, you know, if you have Pam defense teams, I see Xia Feng quite a lot there. But, um,. On a typhoon defense team and i'm really actually kind of happy to say this an allegiance defense team this is going to be really nice indeed let's just check it out i'm going to put all the typhoon characters in a defense team so you can just sort of see what happens when they're there okay so i'm going to attack and i'm only going to attack with one character non-damage dealer because i don't want laupo to taunt you can see how it's going to start this is how roughly the beginning of a battle is going to start not all of these characters are lb3 um, but most of them are um, but this is, is primarily how it's going to start. You're going to see bleed and burn resist and camouflage potentially to every single character. Defense boost on a couple of them as well. Very interesting defense team here. Very, very interesting. And I think it works as a team. I honestly think it works as a team. And you never know. Potentially there could be more Typhoon characters to come out in the future. I'm not sure if there would be a Mythic Trial at all. That is the one that I'm not 100% certain about. There hasn't been any sort of teaser or announcement, but they did just pull a Kingdom Mythic Trial out of their hat randomly at one point, so you never know. So I like his leader skill and I think it works for the Typhoon defense team, you know, the Typhoon Allegiance defense team, but you don't have to use the Typhoon um, characters on that team, you could use other characters. And like I said, Wang Fa could potentially be used on the and attack teams as well, he has potential. Now on his to his weapon, it is obviously no attached weapon, it's just a default knife, you can put in his hands whatever you want. Normally he would need AP on attack because he's a 66 AP character. Because of that AP gain, he will not need it for his first rush. So it should be actually fine. I would go for stats. And if you do get his first rush up and then he's going to survive for a bit longer, you're going to be absolutely fine. Even though his second rush will be a little bit slower, it's no big deal from that point on. You've done your job, basically. You've slowed teams down enough. And um, you're going to have to hope that his teammates are, are doing dirty damage, basically, and, and just ripping them to shreds. That isn't what Wang Fu is there for. He's there for people to have to focus to stop them from getting stunned and stuff like that. Um, which is actually a big bonus because it's going to kind of relieve um, the other characters from being the focus. Um, and if they do ignore Wang Fu, he's going to get some control in. He's got that impair. He's got that, um, that daze, which is not too bad. It's a shame he doesn't have this blade attached that you see on the left hand side because it does look awesome. But who knows? Maybe we'll see it. It pop up as an exclusive weapon in the future, maybe in a future leak store or something. Time will tell.
So that is Gold Mythic Wangfang, and we have our first official, I think, Allegiance defense team. The closest we had previously was Kingdom, and it kind of could get five characters going there, but it, it kind of just ruled itself out with uh, Zachary kind of being obsolete by the time you could use uh, William and Marcus, but the Typhoon defense team looks very set. It looks very set, and it looks very tanky. It's got a lot of bonus HP, lots of little niggly bits of control. You, like I said, you've got, to, you've got to weave through all the extra passive bonuses that you get when particular characters are taken out. Or, you know, it's very, very intricate, the Typhoon defense team. But you could obviously swap out one or two pieces. For instance, you don't like Dei, you don't like Xiaofeng, you could put in two other characters instead. The option is yours. That leader skill works with everybody. It's just the AP bonus that is quite nice there does only work with Typhoon characters. But do give me your thoughts on Wang Fa. What do you think about him going exclusively into the Mythic store? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. That is the end of my video, guys. I want to thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.